Good evening, friends. God bless you. Let us uncover another devil's truth uh, from the scripture. And this is the one that uh, really uh, tricks uh, so many believers. Uh, and that you will found in Galatians chapter 3. And the verse is 7 and 8. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 and 8. Let me read. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to pleasure their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal uh, life. Now, if you take this scripture on a face value, and this is how devil tricks us uh, believing believers that you are not following God. You have, after accepting Jesus Christ, you have committed sin. You have not given your life completely to Jesus. And now that is that means you are mocking God. And Bible says here, a man reaps what he sows. So now whatever even, yes, you have given your life to Jesus. But now see what you are doing and you have to reap. Because Bible says whatever you um, sow, you will reap. And again, it says, so, so, so as to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. And this is the thing that, that is a very, very uh, scary part. Uh, and if you, I'm reading from the uh, New International Version. If you read in a New Living Translation, it says, don't be misled. You cannot mark the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. You will always harvest. There is no way around it. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So this is a very troubling scriptures and they will use these three scriptures to deceive so many believers. And that is why he is robbing them from enjoying the fullness of life that Jesus has given them. Or, and Jesus has promised them in John 10.10. The 10. Bible says that God, uh, Jesus came to, lie, uh, to this earth so we have a life and life of abundance. But uh, this, the book of Galatians, that, uh, that the letter that Paul wrote, uh, has a constant theme of uh, sin and uh, uh, flesh and on the second part is uh, grace and um, uh, law law and grace and sin and flesh that is a constant theme in in this um, letter of uh, letter to Galatians however uh, there are two parts one is the uh, direct implication why this particular verse is written and then there is a spiritual aspect also because um, the, the whole theme we need to understand uh, why the book of Gal uh, letter of Galatians was written. Uh, today we are going to focus on the direct implication why this particular verse is written. So if you pay for, uh, attention that verse 3, uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 3 says that if anyone thinks there are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. So uh, Paul explains here, let me clear, uh, clarify first thing, that um, once you are saved, you are not losing your salvation. You are not going to lose the favor of Jesus Christ. The, the, the finished work Jesus did is a perfect. Jesus did not law, uh, kept any loophole for devil to claim your and my pleasure and that God cannot show his favor on us. Because when Jesus took away my and your sin on the cross, he took away every single one of them. The one that you have uh, committed by knowingly, the one you did not know and committed, the one you have done in past, the one you will committing in future. Jesus has covered all your sin. His work is complete. And that is why he cried out when he died that it is finished. So that, that is a one thing. So devil devil uh, might be uh, trying to lead you to believe his lies. So uh, now let us focus on this particular that uh, verse three. If anyone thinks they are something what, uh, when they are not, they deceive themselves. So a lot of people believe that they are good enough, that life is good enough. They have not done anything wrong. 
They have not committed murder. They have not committed adultery. They are going to church regularly. They are doing their um, charitable work. They are uh, giving offering. They are doing everything. They are helping people. They are doing everything right. And then they will think that because we are doing right things, we deserve to get eternal life. And that is why if you read clearly, if anyone thinks they are something, that means you have earned something. They are not. Don't deceive themselves. And that is the same thing Paul is repeating in uh, chapter 7. Do not be deceived. Now, deceived by whom? He, Paul says that do not be deceived and God cannot be mocked. So, deceived by whom? Deceived by devil. God doesn't deceive, deceive people. God will point out, out the truth, the way it is. When, when the uh, teachers of the law and came and said, that God tell us which is the greatest commandment. And God said that love your God with your all heart and mind and strength. He points out what is the what the uh, law requires, and do not be deceived. Deceived by devil. Devil is deceiving that your life is good. You don't have to give your life to Jesus. You you are doing everything right. That is one deception. And then, furthermore, if you focus on verse uh, six, now Paul is changing. Uh, his uh, message dramatically. Let me read chapter uh, verse 6. Nevertheless, the one who receives instructions in the world should share all good things with their instructors. This is NIV. In New Living Translation, those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers sharing all good things with them. So Paul, when he's talking about Whatever man uh, saw, he will rape. He's talking about helping the the uh, helping the needy, particularly in this case, helping the servants of God. It is not that Paul is expecting the people of Galatians to support his ministry financially. So he is talking about, and the, the way it is written in Greek, it is a lifestyle. It is not that you reap one time and then uh, you will uh, you saw something and you will reap. No, it is a lifestyle. And that is true. Whatever you saw, you will reap. We committed sin. We saw iniquity and we are destined to reap the destruction. But Jesus came and he paid that penalty that you and me were destined to receive for our for our rebellion, for our iniquities, for our sin, Jesus has already paid. So in a sense, this scripture, Jesus has fulfilled. So now for, on you and me, there is no condemnation. But this particular verse Paul is writing is financial help. Financial help to the teachers. Who are the teachers? The teachers uh, in the synagogue. It, Verse 6 in, L, in a New Living Translation again, those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers sharing all good things with them. So Paul is talking about, hey, God has given you. God has provided you the means. God has given you job. God has given you finance. God has provided you everything. And the teachers of teachers who are teaching you they are not, they are not, they, are, they lost their house. They are serving God wholeheartedly. Now it is your duty to take care of them. That is what Paul is talking about. And that is why he says that man reaps whatever he saws. And then if you, if you read the theme, Paul is not talking about the salvation at this particular moment. Paul is not talking about you saw what you saw, what you reap. He says that if you help the teachers or the instructors with your finance, with your uh, ability, whatever you, way you can help, God will reward you. But if you don't help, you will lose the reward. Jesus said also that whoever gives a cold water in my name, 
a glass of cold water will receive his reward. And we know that on the day of judgment, Jesus would say that when I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And the righteous will say, Lord, when we did this? And Jesus said that if you have done to my uh, servants, that is you have done to me. That is the whole concept. So Paul is not talking about just losing your salvation. Paul is talking about if you have something, you help the, the, the servant of God and God will reward you. And that is he's saying that whoever rape, so whatever they saw, they will rape. If you keep the money for yourself, if you keep the uh, whatever you have for yourself. And that's why he said that whoever saw to please their self, from the flesh will reap destruction because from the flesh what you will get if you if you store everything and that was the one story jesus said that the, the man has a so much harvest and he said that i will tear down all my barns and i big the big barns well god gave him he did not ask he god blessed him for so many things but he said that i will keep everything for myself and and and, and the parable says that god says that what you will get if you if you lose your soul tonight, if you die tonight. That he is talking about. Paul is not talking about losing your salvation. And to emphasize, if you pay attention to verse 10, it says that, therefore, Paul gives this chapter 6, 1 to 8, and then he summarizes, 1 to 9, and he summarizes. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So Paul says that, let us do. So Paul is summarizing everything. And in essence, he gives the summary conclusion in verse 10 chapters, Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. Let us do good to everybody, particularly those are believers. Those are in body of Christ. Those has given to their life to Jesus Christ. Do everybody and never forget about the servant of God. So this particular passage, what Paul is writing to Galatians, when he says that do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked, a man reaps what he sows, whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction, whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. So Paul is not talking about after accepting Christ, if you do something wrong, if you miss the mark, then you will reap the destruction and death and you will lose your salvation. That is a devil's lie. That is not what Paul is talking about. We'll continue studying these Galatians tomorrow while Paul is talking about, this is he is talking here, flesh and a sin. And the latter part, he is talking about the law and grace. And we'll continue our study tomorrow, understanding law and grace from Galatians. And the, the, the let not devil trick you to believe using these words that, oh my God, what will happen? I committed sin. Though I am born again Christian, though I am saved by grace, I committed sin. And now, according to this scripture, Will I lose my salvation? No, you are not. Will I lose God's favor? No, you will not. Will I lose the favor of God? No, you will not. Will I lose God's blessings? No, you will not. Will God stop answering my prayer? No, he will answer your prayers. Because Paul is not talking about here. Paul is saying that as, in verse 10, remember, as, as we have opportunity, if you walk, if you drive, you can see homeless person. If you are walking and you see somebody is struggling, if you walk in a, uh, walking on the street and you are seeing somebody is shivering, you have opportunity all around you. Open your eyes and do good. That is Paul is talking about. He's not talking about if you don't do good, if you don't give somebody cold water, God will take care of them. God will provide some way or another. What God to, uh, what Esther uh, in the book of Esther, Mordecai, the uncle of Esther says that, remember, God might have made you Esther queen for this day to save your people. But if you if you don't do that, then God will deliver his people. God will not forget his people. But 
you will miss your reward. So that is the sense here that all around you, there is opportunity to go, do good. If you don't do good, if you keep everything for yourself, you will miss the rewards, but you will not lose your salvation. But it is better, it is better to get the reward also. So do good. That was Paul's message here. I hope God will encourage you to remind that don't believe on devil's lie, that you will lose your salvation in God's favor. God bless you and thank you.